You've seen the videos, 100 push-ups a day, every day for 30 days. Some claim it transformed their chest, others say it's a waste of time. So what's the truth? Can you actually build muscle with this challenge? Or is it just another internet fitness gimmick? Today, we're taking a deep dive into what really happens when you commit to 100 push-ups a day. We'll explore the physiology, the risks, the rewards, and most importantly, what the science actually says. This is Clinical Muscle. Section one, what muscles are worked in a push-up? Let's start with basics. A proper push-up is a compound closed chain bodyweight movement. That means multiple joints and muscle groups are involved, making it highly functional. The primary movers in a push-up include pectoralis major, the main chest muscle, triceps brachii, particularly the long head, anterior deltoids, front of your shoulder, serratus anterior, stabilizes the shoulder blade, core muscles, including rectus abdominis and transverse abdominis. In EMG studies, Push-ups show significant activation in the pec major and triceps. A 2015 study by Boehm found that even basic push-ups activate the chest similarly to light to moderate bench press loads in untrained individuals. However, as we'll discuss shortly, activation alone doesn't mean hypertrophy. It takes more than firing a muscle to make it grow. Section two, can you build muscle with 100 push-ups a day? Muscle growth, also called hypertrophy, is driven by three main factors. One, mechanical tension. Two, metabolic stress. Three, muscle damage. Mechanical tension created by contracting muscles under load is the primary stimulus. That's why lifting heavy weights works so well. But what about push-ups? In untrained individuals, body weight is heavy enough to create meaningful tension, especially during the first few weeks. Many beginners report visible improvements in muscle tone, particularly in the chest, triceps, and front delts. However, the body adapts quickly. For anyone with moderate training experience, 100 push-ups broken into sets, you say four sets of 25, will be submaximal and unlikely to induce further growth. That's backed up by a 2012 study by Mitchell, which found that low load training to failure produced similar hypertrophy to high load lifting. But the key is to failure. Most 100 push-up routines don't reach that point. Also, there's no built-in progression. You're not increasing reps, load, or difficulty. That violates one of the most fundamental rules of muscle building, progressive overload. Section three, strength versus endurance. What improves? Next question, will you get stronger? Push-ups can improve relative strength, your ability to move your body weight, but they're less effective for increasing absolute strength, like benching more weight or improving one rep max performance. Why? Because push-ups don't provide adjustable resistance. You can't add weight easily. That limits your ability to train in the three to six rep range optimal for neural strength adaptations. What you will improve is muscular endurance, your ability to sustain submaximal effort over time. A 2015 meta-analysis by Schoenfeld confirmed this. High rep, low load training improves muscular endurance. Low rep, high load training improves maximal strength. So if you're training for better push-up performance or functional upper body endurance, great. But for heavy lifts or explosive power, you'll need a different approach. Section four, is it safe to do 100 push-ups every day? One overlooked factor in these challenges is joint health. Doing the same movement pattern every day without variation or recovery increases your risk of overuse injuries. Most common issues include wrist pain from repeated flexion without support, elbow tendonitis, especially with poor tempo, shoulder impingement from limited scapular movement. The push-up movement emphasizes internal rotation of the shoulder. Over time, this can create imbalance if you're not doing opposing movements, like rows or face pulls. A 2019 review by Schoenfeld and colleagues highlighted that frequency must be balanced with load management, movement variety, and recovery strategies. So yes, 100 push-ups a day is generally safe for healthy individuals with good form, but doing it for months on end with poor posture or no variation, that's a fast track to overuse. Section five, how does this compare to traditional strength training? Compared to a structured gym program, the 100 push-up challenge falls short in almost every training principle. Let's break it down. Traditional resistance training allows for 
progressive overload, increased weight or reps over time, range of motion control, especially under load, targeted movement selection for specific weaknesses, deloading and recovery programming. Push-ups in contrast are fixed load, limited range, and harder to scale without equipment. Schoenfeld, 2020, found that volume and intensity were the biggest driver of hypertrophy, not frequency alone. So unless you're modifying your push-up routine constantly by adding tempo, increasing time under tension, or using external weight, it's going to plateau quickly. For beginners, it's a great start, but for serious muscle building, push-ups alone are insufficient. Section six, what the science says about high-frequency training. There's been real research on this topic. A 2019 study by Danko compared high-frequency training five times a week to split routines. Both groups gained similar muscle, but only when total volume was matched. Another key point, they trained to near failure and adjusted load every session. So what does this mean for 100 push-ups per day? If you're taking them close to failure, if you're progressively increasing reps or difficulty, and if you're managing recovery, then yes, you can grow muscle with high-frequency calisthenics. But for most people doing basic push-ups daily, volume is too low and effort too submaximal. Also worth noting, a study in the European Journal of Applied Physiology found that high-frequency calisthenics improved neuromuscular coordination and fatigue resistance, great for general fitness. So the science supports some benefits, but only under the right conditions. Section seven, the psychological side, building discipline. Let's talk psychology. One underrated benefit of doing 100 push-ups a day is habit formation. Building the discipline to move your body daily, even for just 10 minutes, can have compounding effects. It creates a low barrier to entry, requires no equipment, and reinforces a fitness identity. Many people use it as a trigger habit, a simple action that sparks other healthy behaviors like walking more, tracking calories, or hitting the gym. So while it may not maximize hypertrophy, it absolutely can build consistency, which is the backbone of any long-term fitness result. Section eight, how to modify the challenge for better results. If you're going to take on this challenge, here's how to make it more effective and safer. One, add variations. Alternate between standard, diamond, wide grip, tempo, and decline push-ups to target different fibers and reduce overuse. Two, use progressive overload. Add reps, elevate feet, slow the tempo, or use a weighted vest. Three, focus on form, keep elbows at 45 degrees, engage the core, and avoid shrugging shoulders. Bad form equals no gains plus injury risk. Four, add pulling movements, do rows, band pulls, or pull-ups to balance your shoulder girdle and prevent postural imbalance. Five, include rest days or deloads. Take at least one day off per week or cycle intensity to allow soft tissue recovery. The goal is not just doing 100 reps, it's doing them well, progressively and sustainably. Section nine, who should and shouldn't do this challenge? Great for beginners wanting to build a daily habit, people returning from long layoffs, those seeking a body weight only option, endurance athletes or martial artists focusing on functional stamina, not ideal for intermediate to advanced lifters seeking hypertrophy, anyone with shoulder wrist mobility issues, people looking to build max strength or size, individuals prone to overuse injuries, this challenge is a tool, not a program. Use it with context. Final verdict. So what really happens if you do 100 push-ups a day? You'll improve muscular endurance. You may gain modest muscle, especially as a beginner. You'll build discipline and daily movement habits, but gains will plateau quickly without progression. There's a risk of overuse injuries if done improperly, and it doesn't replace a well-structured strength program. Ultimately, it's a decent short-term challenge, but for long-term growth, strength, and injury prevention, you need a more complete plan. For more evidence-based fitness insights, subscribe to Clinical Muscle. Train smart. Train with purpose.